Who else wished puffed rice is as easy as popcorns? Commercial puffed grains are made in high-pressure cannons, behind factory doors in the U.S. and out on open streets in other parts of the world. It works with almost any grain. High heat builds a pressure inside the cannon, and a sudden release causes the water and the starch inside the hard husk to expand and explode. You can still find a miniature version of them on Amazon, but even the minis look quite dangerous for home use. Top tips for home puffed rice involves boiling, drying, and deep frying them. Too much effort for rice crispy even for me. Then I came across the Indian street food method, which replaces oil with hot sand or salt. Very amusing, very encouraging. I'm still not about to cook and dry my own rice, but here we have commercial parboiled rice, which you can easily find in any U.S. grocery. They're pre-boiled and pre-dried. And a lot cheaper than regular rice. I bought a huge bag a while ago because I could not resist a good sale, and have since tried everything possible to use them up. For comparison, I also got some instant rice, which are also pre-cooked and dried as well. And just out of curiosity, I also wanted to see if this method works on any other grains. So here we have millet, wheat berries, purple rice, and corn. You'll need enough salt to submerge your grains, and a big frying pan for stirring. Salt doesn't heat as quickly and evenly as liquid. You'll need to give it a few stirs. If you're using a thermometer, I'd heat it to at least 400 Fahrenheit or 200 Celsius. You can also test with a single kernel of popcorn and wait for it to pop. In goes two tablespoons of parboiled rice. Stir until you hear them popping. And voila, puffed rice. Because the salt is so hot, even on low heat, these will darken and burn real fast if you don't remove them from the salt fast enough. So don't use a small mesh sieve like my Plan A here. Just take a large sieve and dump everything in the pot into the sieve. These are way darker than puffed rice cereals, but don't throw them out just yet. We'll repurpose them in a bit. Meanwhile, take two: salt heated, rice in, stir, stir, pop, sieve, shake, and ta-da! Commercial parboiled rice is the perfect. Foolproof shortcut to home puffed rice. I also tried this with instant rice. The results are similar among the different varieties. They definitely do pop. In close comparison, the grains are not as big as the parboiled rice, and also had a marginally firmer texture. The parboiled rice has a nice nuttiness to it, almost like popcorn. Neither tastes salty at all, and both would make solid snacks with some popcorn seasoning. They're both denser than Rice Krispie cereal, which is in turn not as airy as the Cannon puffed rice. So I'm not sure the salt puffed batches are good direct subs for the commercial stuff. Let's try these with some milk. First, the store-bought goodness for control. Nice and crunchy. And then the salt puffed ones. Nope. No, 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 no. I thought the milk would make it better, but it just really highlights how much harder, chewier, and denser these are compared to the Cheeto-like, puffy texture of Rice Krispies. What this flavor profile reminded me a lot of is the roasted rice in Jamai tea. I had to try these with some upgraded green tea. Gyokuro is a milder, naturally sweeter alternative to the more commonly used sencha. I'm happy to report these rice are absolutely excellent for tea. The darker roast is actually more nutty and complex in flavor, kind of like brown butter versus regular butter. You can also use the roasted rice with baked green tea, which will be a lot cheaper than store-bought Jamai tea. Now the test on the other grains. Which all had a hard husk exterior and should theoretically pop like corn. First, the millet. Listen to the pops. 
they definitely first expanded in size, but after removing from heat and chilling, they also shrunk back quite a bit. Now the wheat berries. They start to smell nice and toasty real quickly, but I don't see them expanding in size much if at all. Nothing like the cannon puffed wheat you find in store. But they do taste very much cooked. If you crave edible cookie dough often, grump these up and you got easy pasteurized flour. Now the purple rice. This one is easy to visualize. You can see the dark husk crack as they pop. They didn't size up too much either, especially after cooling. Lastly, the popcorn, which I was totally confident about, but spoiler alert, turned out disastrous. I know our test grain popped just fine, but in larger quantities, even just a tablespoon will leave your stove and floor covered in salt. So stick with your microwave or hot air popper, or at least be prepared with a lid. If you're entertained by pointless kitchen experiment that curbs the curiosity, please hit the like button and subscribe for more.